games made in Game Maker. And this is a robot named Fight, where you are a little Terminator fighting against, I don't know, some flesh monsters. And then there is a little backstory why that is happening. Not too terribly complex, but okay, we got some context. And this was made by Matt Beitner in his free time. And if, if you see, for example, Steam Spy, well, 50 to 100k sales, that was a financial success for just one game, by the way. He just made one and made a bank on that. So, uh, well, well done, sir. And then, of course, this game emulates Super Metroid with infinite replayability, kind of being a roguelite. So basically you die and then you have to start everything anew. But of course on your runs you unlock new uh, gear, new weapons and stuff. And therefore this is then keeping the game fresh because each time maybe you find some new gadgets and then in the next run you can actually pick them up. So this is pretty cool and keeps the game fresh. And of course the game simplifies it by uh, making you stronger with upgrading your core values which is your health your energy for your weapons, then movement speed, attack speed and damage and so on, which is just found on, well, stronger enemies. So they give you a slight boost and of course scattered in some, well, areas, with, uh, for example, on invisible walls or whatever, which you have to break and then you can collect it and then you get bigger versions of one of those core values. All right, so the game gives you kind of the metroidvania touch and therefore you need to have items or weapons or gadgets that ex let you access formerly not accessible areas i don't know like double jump electric acid or explosive damage or for example you find uh, armors that allow you to go through extreme heat or for example i don't know um, give you a light corona so for example in completely dark areas so once again these uh, areas are distinct and therefore they are just being accessed with the specific gadget which you find on your way. And this could be just breaking a wall, a door, or just being extremely high and then the double jump is the remedy for that. Then to top it off, you need to destroy mini bosses along your way until you have the final gear which lets you access the last boss. Most of the time that was an infinite jump or some, some rocket boost or whatever. So that was uh, pretty neat. And spoiler, if you haven't played it, you need to uh, have three runs where you beat the final boss and then you can access a super area above the regular, already pretty big level. And then you can, um, well, technically beat the game to the core. But of course, then it keeps on giving because I guess a month ago or very recently ago, they just added new biomes and new stuff, so the game is still being supported, which is pretty sweet. The pros, each time you have a different experience, which is true. And then you got some really strong Super Nintendo vibes, which is of course banking on nostalgia and why not. Good games should be emulated. And then of course you got tons of upgrades and gadgets and there are quite a few to be honest. So this is pretty neat. And then you got some obscure vendor system where you can uh, get new stuff which you need always uh, you have to use the wiki for that so then you got a fun run each time and then well it just cost me a buck so i got it on a sale so now it's 10 bucks something on steam but hey just uh, watch out for a sale then you can get it for one dollar which is just obscene so pretty sweet in my opinion then let's go to the bad which is a little bit of clunky movement, which you, by the way, have in Super Metroid. Also, I never liked it that you got some clunkiness. Of course, it gives you a different feeling of weight and so on, but I prefer to be extremely snappy. So this is a minus. Once again, this is very subjective. I don't like it the way. Of course, this is not game breaking or whatever, but not my cup of tea. And then you not always get a uh, easy and fair runs so sometimes you just get some really crappy gadgets or upgrades or whatever and then you have to fight a boss and he will push you over and then it's like uh, uh. and here we go again let's start a new run and then i must say not all web uh, weapons and gadgets are really useful some are extremely powerful and some are just complete weights of space in your inventory or your so-called inventory because you can just uh, cycle through your weapons and then to some special abilities also so our final verdict for this game is 
could be an 8 out of 10 if the clunky movement wouldn't be there. So it's now a very solid 7 out of 10. A pretty sweet game. You will find tons of hours of entertainment in it. And it is basically a love letter to Super Metroid and being uh, the option of playing it again and again and again and again. Alrighty, that was it from my side. Have a good one. One up indie.